Well, good morning and welcome to our special meeting this morning. We'll begin and the time is, I'll put this meeting to order at 10.03. Thank you, Trustee Nakatani for doing roll call. Uh, President Swinson Todd. I am present. Trustee Abdulli. Present. Trustee Katz. Present. I'm Trustee Nakatani and I'm here. And Trustee you are you online yet? All right, Trustee you has identified she'll be here within five minutes. She's in a public place in Southern California. We'll get herself settled. Oh, oh and voila. Uh, Trustee you, I'm doing roll call if you want to state your presence. I'm present. We uh, cannot hear her. We cannot hear you if you can hear us. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hear you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, and if you could turn up your volume a little bit, Trustee you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. So, okay, can you hear we go to opportunity for public comment this morning. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry. Um, Mask for a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, I move to approve the agenda. All in favor? Okay. Second. Second. Aye. Second. Second, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All opposed? Aye. All right. Um, Trustee Hugh, did you hear we approve the agenda? I don't recall hearing your approval. Approved. Can you hear me? Thank you. Um, you have to do a roll call for every um, approval and then there's uh, no conflicts. All right, so we'll do a roll call. Thank oh, you very call. much. Okay. Oh, we uh, have some new legislation as of January. Okay, President Sir Sataj. Present. No, I write your on the agenda. <laughs> approval of the uh, uh, present and approved. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Abdullahi. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Katz. Aye. Trustee Yu. Aye. And I'm Trustee Nakatani and I'm aye. Okay. I think we have it all settled now. Now we'll go to communications of the board. And the board recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and provides this time for members of the audience to address the board only on items on the agenda. Each speaker is required to identify him or herself prior to addressing the board and will be heard for up to two and a half minutes given the volume of comments uh, uh, interested parties today. And if um, we could start with those people in person, I understand we do have people on Zoom as well. So thank you for being here, but we do have three people in person and we'll begin with, with those uh, folks. So let us begin with Cedric Cruz. Cedric, Cedra, I'm sorry, Cedra, please come on up. This is my first time, I don't know what I'm doing. No problem. So Hi. does Cedra have a uh, mic or where would you suggest? Speaking of the whole room. Oh, oh thank you. So maybe yeah, right that's it. That's a new one for us. Okay. Uh, and you'll have two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Okay. So when you're ready. We'll start the clock. Okay. So mm -hmm. I am Cedra, and I'm going to start now. Hi, my name is Cedra, and I'm here today in support of my teachers and all teachers in the negotiations that are taking place. I am a sixth grader at Mill Valley Middle School. I literally should be in class upstairs right now. And I also went to Old Mill from kindergarten to fifth grade. I'm going to tell you why we should listen to our teachers during these current negotiations. First, teachers are asking to keep their current prep time. Some people think that if a teacher isn't actively teaching a class, they aren't working. And those hours should be used for active teaching. That's not true, not even close to reality. Prep time is important for all teachers. If a teacher doesn't get the amount of prep time needed for a class, then they won't be able to give me and my other kids a good education. Prep time is used to plan assignments and activities when they need to be used. Teachers work really hard during prep time. They set up slides, post assignments to Google Classroom, problem solve tech issues, and grade assignments. Some teachers need to change their plans because kids need to understand understand a constant faster than like a teacher expected or sometimes the teacher may have to work harder on the topic because students are struggling they can also use prep time to introduce new concepts prep time also lets teachers calm down if one class was really bad it gives them a chance to regroup and talk with other teachers that way they can leave the negative energy out and start fresh even with the current prep time, I know every teacher has planned and did things outside of school. They work on the weekends, evenings, and mornings, not just during school hours. I hope you can already see the problem with teachers getting less prep time. I think more prep time or still have the current prep time would be the best solution. 
Second, teachers should be paid more. They will never be paid enough for all the things they do. As I said above, they work outside of school hours, planning things, meeting other teachers, and shopping for their things in their classroom. Also, they meet with parents if their kid isn't good in class. It's also really expensive to live in Mill Valley. There are almost no houses here that are under a million dollars. Just because it isn't expensive here doesn't mean, just because it is expensive here isn't the only reason teachers should be paid more. Teachers are always working. When they aren't working during prep time, they're they teaching at least 20 kids. Imagine your kid and his or her needs and times it by 20. You are most likely thinking of one to three kids is enough for me, but teachers have 20 or more kids. Okay. Thank you very much, Cedra, for coming and taking your time today. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. And next, bye, take care. Next. May we have a uh, Danielle Daba? Good morning to all those in attendance today. Thank you for caring so much and doing this important work for our schools. My name is Danielle Daba. I teach seventh grade English, social studies, and reading here at the middle school. I'm having a hard time understanding why salary negotiations are going nowhere. Management has not once changed from their initial offering, and it's a matter of public record that you can afford to do so. I'd like to give you real life examples of why it's important to pay the salaries that will attract and retain teachers. Here at the middle school, we've had a number of teaching vacancies in the last two school years, including teachers who left mid-year. To cover this shortage, many of our teachers are working 1.2 schedules, which means they're teaching extra classes during what would normally be prep period. There are a couple of reasons that we can't fill these openings. Some of these vacancies we just plain can't fill. Any basic economics course would tell you that you must increase the pay to fill the position. I won't get into the behind the scenes gossip of why other vacancies have happened. However, I can say with great certainty, offering the strongest possible salaries will help most of these issues in the future. Offering strong salary packages attracts to help uh, retain the best teachers for our students and retain those we already have. It's that simple. This nation is experiencing an extreme teacher shortage and much of this has to do with low salaries. Mill Valley can buck this trend. Mill Valley can afford to fix this issue. The Mill Valley School Board needs to do what's best for students and ensure they have teachers in all the classrooms. If you are worried about the academic success of our students, you should make sure that you have a certificated teacher in each and every classroom in August 2023. The only surefire way to do this is to pay enough in salary to attract enough teachers to fill every vacancy. While it might not seem to be alarming to you if we have a few open teaching positions in August, put yourself in the shoes of a sixth grader who's in a new school and has had a rotating cast of teachers, many of them substitutes without a teaching credential. I wish we could fix the nation's teaching shortage right here in this room but we can't. What you can do is pay Mill Valley teachers a salary that helps to retain and attract the best teachers in the county. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. And now Steve Savage, please. Thank you. Ready? I'm down to 2.30, so it's going to be short. My name is Steve Savage. I work for the California Teachers Association, and I had the honor of being with your teachers yesterday in negotiations. Um, I spent 40 years in public education. I know how hard the job is, yours, your administration, and especially your teachers. Um, your students deserve the best teachers. They really do. They, I've been doing... Cedra is an excellent example, all right? So they deserve the absolute best. Let me uh, give you another perspective because I'm sure you're gonna get your uh, administration's perspective in closed session. Teachers have been out for six days, five of them taking six days 
creating lesson plans, doing everything they need, making sacrifices to be in negotiations for the good of all so that your students can have the best teachers. Uh, they have got the same basic proposal every single time. Your uh, administration may characterize some growth, but one-time money that they'll see in June of 2025 is not really an improvement in the same proposal time and time again. I cannot tell you more clearly the incredible frustration your teachers are feeling. Now, it's a teacher's market. There's a teacher shortage. T districts that want the best teachers and have the best salaries are opening up the number of years of service so they can steal your best teachers and the best teachers from everywhere around. And they are doing it. They are successful. If you want the best teachers for your students, you have to invest in teachers. Now, your students deserve the best materials, curriculum, teachers, but there is no book or computer you can buy that's worth anything without a qualified, dedicated teacher in front of the room leading that lesson. That's the most important investment you can make. There are a lot of districts who want the best teachers, but very few who really care to have the best ending balance. So it's time to invest in what's necessary. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize, but I probably won't stay for the whole thing. I have more problems to solve in San Francisco. So thank you. Thank you. No problem. Won't be offended. And now, Teresa Shern. Teresa, are you there? Hey, yes. Good morning. Can you hear me? We'll turn up the volume. Not quite yet. Okay. Can you say something, please, Teresa? Can you hear me now? Are you able to hear me now? Hello. Okay. I can talk louder. Is that better? We'll make it it's, it's still low. Let's see if we can. Let me, okay. Is this better? Think on the video button on Zoom. Try the arrow next to it and see if it gives you different options for how to listen. Yeah, the speaker is not connected yet. Yeah. Speakers connected. Yeah, it's connected to the. Can you say something, Teresa, please? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. This is better. Yes. Is that better? Okay. Hi. Good morning. Um, first, I would like to say that it's a little bit frustrating that we don't have more representation right now from Edna McGuire School as recess just ended. Um, so I'm here on my prep to deliver this message on behalf of Anna Curtis, who is a second grade teacher here at Edna, and I am a third grade teacher. Dear Mill Valley School District Board Trustees, thank you again and again for all that you are doing for your Mill Valley students, teachers, and staff. As a teacher in the Mill Valley School District, my priority has always been to do what's best for students. While this letter I am writing may seem to be about teachers, I want to assure you that this is also about students. My goal is for you to understand that teacher morale right now is the lowest that I've ever seen in my 30 plus years of teaching, and that you will take a minute to consider why and do your best to help right this ship. I have taught in five different school districts throughout my career. I have definitely experienced the ups and downs in all of them with each passing year. However, there is something about what's going on right here and now in Mill Valley that is very different than anything I've experienced before, and it's heartbreaking. The tension, the combativeness, and the adversarial relationship between the teachers and management that we have been feeling for the last few years is overwhelming and seems unnecessary. It's unnecessary because we all want the same thing. We all want to do what's best for kids and this school district has the means. So it is unnecessary because management can listen when we say large classes are not good for anyone. It's unnecessary because management could somehow start seeing teachers as more than numbers on a spreadsheet. 
They can start thinking about how displacing us to new grade levels or schools affects our daily lives. They could consider our strengths, our experience, our love of kids, our love of our community, our love of the curriculum at our grade level and for our school. It's unnecessary because they could show their teachers and the Mill Valley community that they value and appreciate the lengths we go to to be our very best and do our very best for our students and families. It's also unnecessary because they can, could consider that students are also not just numbers on a spreadsheet. It's unnecessary because instead of considering making classes of more than 20 primary students, they can choose to allow classes below 20. It's unnecessary because if they just look back, they'd see that historically every year, a significant number of new students are placed in our classes the week before school starts, which fills our classes to the brim. It's unnecessary because they could make an effort to see that 21 or more student names on a list are humans with personalities that should not all be placed together. They could try to understand that in any given year, a rising grade level of 20 or more could have many behavioral, social, emotional, or academic needs. Those needs Teresa, can be fundamental. Teresa, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm not sure if you knew that we had a two and a half minute um, time limit because of the number of people who wish to speak. I'm sorry. Did no, you know you. that? I did, and I didn't hear any buzzer going off, so I oh, just went. Oh, okay. It. So yeah. we'll... We'll um, make sure to call time. Um, please finish your, your, your sentence there, but um, yes, the buzzer yeah. did go off. Okay, so um, I think just to finish uh, that we are proud to work here and we hope that the message is received. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa, appreciate it. And now is Erin Frazier and Orlinda Broon online? Linda, are you on? I am. So, Aaron, Great. thank can you, you. Can you hear and me? We can. And Sid, perhaps you could call time at two and a half. All right, because it sounds like the buzzer is hard to hear. So we both thank have, you for being here, Linda. Yeah, we both have our separate statements, but she had to go back to her class. Can I read oh, okay. mine and then read hers separately at or hers first and then mine at a different time? Um. I think that uh, I didn't, I, it said Erin Frazier and or Linda Brune. Um, yeah, because she was it, going to speak, but the bell rang and she had to run back to her students. Okay, so go ahead and make your statement. And then if you can make hers and, you know, do your best to um, or I can make add hers, additional. Yeah, I can make hers after everybody else if there's time. How's that? Okay, go right okay. ahead. All right, so I'm Linda Brune, MBTA co-president. And we want to express our great disappointment and frustration over management's continued lack of movement at the bargaining table. Management has not moved from their initial proposal of an 8% salary increase for the 2023-24 school year. As members have expressed in public comments and in emails to you, the cost of living allocation in California has outpaced MBTA salaries over the past five years. This means MBTA members have taken significant pay cuts to continue serving the students of Mill Valley. We also want to point out that management's proposal, which has not changed over the course of six bargaining sessions, would cost the district roughly 1.8 million. MBTA's current proposal, which has decreased from our original proposal by 4%, and at this point, management and MBTA are only $690,000 apart. You may ask, where could we find these funds? We did not hear the same line of questioning when the board approved the first and second interim budgets, which increased the allocation of funds for books and supplies by over $2.3 million, which is more than we have ever spent in any school year in recent years. And we provided you that data in an email. And $2.4 million in services and other operating expenses this late in the year. Why is management refusing to make movement toward MBTA's reasonable proposal when they quickly make the decision to move large amounts of money to be spent on books, supplies, services, and other operating expenses. It is outrageous that every time our bargaining te team goes to the table, they are met not only with a refusal to make compromises on improving supports for students and teachers, but an unwillingness to codify any supports for students and teachers. This 
This week, management added to the list of unreasonable proposals and vague contract language that could never be enforceable. And Mill Valley School District students deserve the best resources. And M Mill Valley School District's greatest resources are its educators. We ask you once again to pay our educators a reasonable wage that reflects the cost of living increases and our professionalism. Our students deserve the best supports, the best teachers, and the best learning environment. So please work with us to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. And now, Bethany Womack. Bethany, are you there? Bethany? Hi, can you hear me? We can. Hello. Thank you, Bethany, for being okay, here. You'll have two and a half minutes. All right, here goes. Good morning, trustees, Dr. Berman, and members of the community. Thank you for all you're doing for Mill Valley Schools and for your time today. My name is Bethany Womack, and I am the art teacher at Edna McGuire. I love my job. I love seeing the entire student population and have loved seeing them grow as artists in the short amount of time I have known them all this year. Having been a classroom teacher for the last 14 years and now being in a specialist role, it is a unique shift to get to know and teach all the students at Edna. I have watched kids change and flourish and grow together into cohesive teams. And this is in great part because of their remarkable classroom teachers. I am saddened that the management is failing to move on any of the proposed compensation and salary increases proposed by MVTA. This sends a clear message to the teaching community that they do not recognize that their greatest resource is the educators here in Mill Valley. They are not recognizing that they are the foundation from which the entire school district is built and the ground level for all student success. It is impossible to live on a current teacher's salary in such an expensive place. If I had to support my family without my partner's private sector salary, it would be undoable. And while this is not news to anyone, it is becoming even more evident that it simply does not matter to the management with their lack of movement from an 8% pay increase at the negotiating table. They have not budged one inch over the last four negotiating sessions. Not offering a raise that will at least keep up with inflation is like a slap in the face. You are sending the message to teachers that they are not valued. <clears throat> it is not as though the school district does not have the money. Saying that we are at the top of the pay scale in Marin County is not only untrue, it is a straight up lie. Management needs to stop saying that. We are smack dab in the middle when compared to neighboring school districts. Please do the right thing and give your teachers a pay increase to help them stay here and do the work that they love. I fear that if this does not happen, we will all suffer with teachers leaving for other districts. This is a risk we cannot take. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bethany. And now is Lexi Gasparini there? Lexi, can you hear us? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. You'll have two and a half minutes, Lexi, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for taking my comment. Um, so my name is Lexi Gasparini. My husband, Danny Gasparini, is a fifth grade teacher at Strawberry Point Elementary. To start, I have been trying to convince my husband to leave teaching for the last four years. Uh, many of you know him. He is a talented teacher. He holds two master's degrees, credentials in both teaching and administration. He has over 15 years of teaching experience, including teaching graduate level courses. He should leave. It would be to the detriment of Mill Valley School Districts and um, schools and students, but teachers like him should leave. If he left, he could find another job that will require less of him, will offer him the ability to have breakfast with his children in the mornings and pay that would allow us to save for our children's future. And I'm sure some in management would see experienced teachers leaving as nothing more than a cost savings because they're un unable to see past numbers. Um, to my chagrin, however, Danny won't leave teaching because he loves it too much. And therefore he and colleagues like him are being taken advantage of. I am beyond shocked and disappointed with Mill Valley School District's unwillingness to negotiate a teacher wage increase 
beyond 8% for the 2023 2024 school year after four negotiation meetings. What's more, it's disheartening to hear of management's complacency in providing a wage increase that does nothing to offset the cost of living and inflation in the Bay Area. What's even more unbelievable is to hear Mill Valley's management's refusal to be a leader in providing teachers with a salary commensurate with their professionalism, expertise, training, or years of service. As a district with a growing commitment to DEIB practices, it is hypocritical to be unwilling to negotiate a wage increase beyond 8%. In action such as this perpetuates gender pay discrimination. I encourage Mill Valley School District to look closely at the demographics of its teachers and to ask hard questions. What percentage of teachers who live within seven miles of the district require a partner who makes more than they do? I am of the opinion that all teachers should be able to teach without sacrificing the financial well being of their kids, their family, or their future. Until then, I will be continuing to ask my husband to leave teaching. Please, if you value your teachers, pay them their professional worth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lexi. And now Anna Curtis. Anna. I think that was uh, uh, Teresa, Teresa on behalf of the rest of them. Say it again, please. Teresa, Teresa Sharon spoke on. Teresa Sharon spoke on Anna's yes. behalf. Yes. So then Anna, she's, she's not there. there. Thank Anna, you. Okay. Anna is here. Oh, she is. Anna is here. Yes, ma'am. All right, Anna. Can we hear you? Can you hear us? She did probably have to go. She's there, but she probably have to go. Okay. So Ella, oh. I'm here, but I'm in class. So, and Teresa already read, Teresa read my statement. Thank you very much. All right, okay. we want to make sure. Thank okay, you, Anna. thank you. All right, Ella Foskett. Ella, can you hear? Hello. Hi, can Hi, you hear Ella. Me? Yes, Hi. we can. You'll have two and a half minutes when you begin. Thank you. All right. Um, good morning, board trustees. My name is Ella Foskett, and I am a graduate of both Edna McGuire School and MVMS. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. I would like to read a statement on behalf of my mother, Jennifer Foskett, and many of her colleagues who teach at Edna McGuire. Thank you for the service to the district and the children of this community. It was extremely disheartening to hear that yesterday, management made the exact same offer of an 8% salary increase for the fourth time in a row. This does not feel like negotiating, this feels like stonewalling. We would like you to imagine how it feels to be highly educated professionals with a great deal of expertise in our area, having to publicly beg for a fair salary raise, not just once, but multiple times over multiple years. Imagine that you are standing in our shoes. How do you think this feels? It does not feel supportive. It does not make your teachers feel valued or respected. It does not feel as if you are addressing your goal of attracting and retaining teachers. It feels demoralizing and disheartening. The 8% salary increase proposed by management does not even keep up with the cost of living adjustment. It seems as if management is operating from a scarcity model but the district has a huge reserve that is projected to keep growing. There is no scarcity. Management has access to plenty of money to fairly compensate their teachers, maintain aid time, lower class sizes, and preserve prep time. Please encourage management to value, respect, and support their students and their teachers by doing so. Thank you. I would like to add a personal note as well. My mother's income is what allows me to go to college and what will allow my little sister to do the same in another year. Just as living expenses rise each year for your teachers, they also rise for college students. Each year, a costly experience becomes even more costly. Please pay your teachers what they are worth so that they can adequately support their families. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ella. And now Sarah Beard. Sarah, thank you for being here, Sarah. Hi, don't start my two minutes yet. Okay. Where do you want me to sit? Right, either one of those two. Okay, um, the Zoom link that I received um, on my phone, I couldn't um, get it to go through. It linked to something in January. So I live five minutes, so I drove down here. Thank you for going past the 10 to 10.30 yes. time part. Yes. Okay, I wrote something. I think it'll be under two minutes, two and a half. Let me pull it up. Okay. 
Um, hi, my name is Sarah Beard. I have two students at Edna. I try to be as involved and helpful in whatever ways that I can to help the Edna community. I am here to share with you that the actions that have been taken before, during especially COVID and still now after the COVID pandemic is subsiding, have just not been enough. It is still not enough. And we as parents, and I am speaking on behalf of Edna parents in all grades, are completely shocked as we continue to see that our children have class sizes up to 24 students. I know kindergarten teachers that have 20 to 22 students. What? I'm a preschool teacher. And we have maxed 15 to 16 students in our classrooms and I had a co-teacher. There is no opportunity to have small group work with your students when you have 17 to 24 students. Six tables of three to four kids cannot possibly meet with their teachers for more than two minutes per student. How do students ask a question, receive an answer, demonstrate a skill, learn a new skill, share any feelings of concern or worry, and then leave small group time with a sense of accomplishment for both teacher and student? That's not quality education. There's no opportunity for one-on-one -on -one check ins regarding emotional well being. Teachers don't have enough support. Teachers and Edna staff love helping students excel in their education. Teachers are pivotal change makers. They inspire their students to love learning. But how can they when they've been pushed to the ground for so long and the morale is at the lowest point? After, they, after all, they are the ones who taught and kept our children on track and in tune with learning on Zoom, with masks, with mask guards, with hand sanitizer, with elbow bumps and popsico dances. I could cry. Please do the right thing and agree to their union needs. All of them. It isn't much to ask for. We as Edna parents, we look forward to attending the in-person meeting on 427. We will be here in numbers. As Edna parents, we demand to see a significant change happen. The needs of our students, their families, and all Edna staff continue. And they cannot continue this way. We know teachers everywhere that have retired early because during COVID it exasperated the already thin margin of bare minimum needs for teachers to support their students and not just pass them to the next grade to let the next teacher figure it out. Pay the teachers more, give the teachers the support they need and are repeatedly asking for it. Make class ratios lower in all the grades. No more bargaining with our children's future. The money is there, we need you, the MVSD board, to listen to us. We elected you, listen to your constituents, and we are watching and waiting. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's pretty good time. Yes, appreciate you. Yeah. All right, Julie Brimmer, are you here? Julie. What's her? Julie is not here. Okay, we'll look for Julie at the end and see if she comes back. Yes. All right, so now um, is Linda Brunier to read Aaron Frazier's statement? I am here. <clears throat> All right, Linda. All right. So when you're ready, we'll start the timer, two and a half minutes. Okay, so I'm reading this on behalf of Aaron Frazier, my co-president, who couldn't be here because the bell rang and she had to go back. So uh, we continue to be disappointed and frustrated at management's refusal to make any movement on their initial pr proposal. While you have seen other districts and unions in Marin settle for an 8% increase, such as Larkspur, Corner Madera, Miller Creek, and Kentfield, it's important to keep in mind the difference of each district's reserve. As often celebrated at board meetings, our district has a huge reserve, which is often credited as a reason for our AAA rating. As we are all, one of only seven districts in the entire state to have that rating, that must mean that we have one of the top seven most overfunded reserves in the entire state. Right now, our district is projected to have a $17.5 million in the bank at the end of the school year. This is beyond the amount legally required by the state for economic uncertainty. This money is just sitting in the bank when it could be used for today's students and educators. School districts are not banks. Today's money should be spent on today's students by guaranteeing the best learning conditions and attracting and retaining the best educators possible. Our community deserves nothing less than the best teachers for its children. On our current salary schedule, first year's teachers earn less than $65,000. It is not possible to live in Marin, much less support a family on that salary. Why are educators forced to take second jobs or live out of the county to make ends meet? when our district has nearly a $20 million sitting in the bank. 
In addition to the hardworking educators who have told you time and time again that they could not afford to take a teaching job if it weren't for support of spouses or family members, consider Mill Valley taxpayers when making the next direction to your bargaining team regarding educator salaries. Not only do taxpayers fund our daily operating budget through property taxes, they fund our bloated reserve. And if they knew that the money was sitting in the bank so the district could just tout a AAA bond rating instead of going for, towards their children and their grandchildren's current teaching and learning experience, what would they say? And lastly, if, if I want to ask if that Mill Valley School District truly values its educators who are the ones providing education, love, protection, and safety to our community's children each and every day, I want to point out one striking comparison as to how the Mill Valley School District values its district office staff your time is up, Linda. All right, thank you. I'll send the rest in the email. Thank you, Linda. Okay, thank you. And our last, thank you. Our last uh, speaker, Chrissy Shinongoza, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much. Your two and a half minutes will start when you begin. Yeah, uh, my name is Chrissy Shinongoza. I'm a parent um, of a TKer and a second grader at Edna McGuire. Um, I'm, I'm talking, ca calling to talk about a couple of things related to what the union is or what the teachers are asking for. One thing I really want to talk about is my daughter is in second grade and she has a class size of 23. Last year, she was a class size of 17. This is a huge dramatic change in how she has even reacted to this year. Transitions are extremely hard and I can't imagine being a teacher taking 23 kids from one place to the other. Um, her anxiety has greatly increased and always talking about how hard it is to have those 23 cl classmates versus having the 17. Um, so if you don't think that that small change is going to be a big defect, it's made a huge effect on her and her anxiety this year. Her emotions are a, a whole lot higher and I really feel like it's, and I don't feel like she's learning as much this year. Um, another thing I just want to point out too is about their, um, our teacher salary. I'm a nurse. I and just like teachers, we did not come into this profession to be millionaires. We came up because 